Okay. Hey everyone. Um, I decided this summer I was actually going to do like a project based on sort of a inspired by several people that I've avidly watched, read, or blogged. Um, not blogged with, but sort of watched over the course of a few months. The first being Alex Reads Twilight, done by the t uh, YouTube channel Nariman. And he basically went chapter by chapter through Twilight, giving his real time thoughts on the book. And the other inspiration I had was, um, oops, uh, Fifty Shades of Suck, which is a Tumblr about Fifty Shades of Grey and how awful it is, which leads me to my project, Nori Reads Fifty Shades of Grey. I will not be reading this real time because I do not have the patience for that. I'll be reading it chapter by chapter and giving you my thoughts on it. Um, I make little notes. I don't know if you can see them. I have a red pen with me handy. And basically I'm going to give you the overview, sort of the what the book is about, I guess, and then I'm going to go through chapter one with you. So Fifty Shades of Grey is written by E.L. James. It is a New York Times bestseller, which kind of terrifies me. And I read somewhere that is actually like a Twilight fanfiction type deal, and I can totally tell from chapter one alone. So in chapter one, we're introduced to our uh, protagonist. Her name is Anastasia Steele, which sounds like you know, the kind of pen name you give yourself when you're writing erotica as opposed to like a real person. And the first time we meet her, we are told that she is a pale brown haired girl with blue eyes too big for her face. And already I'm like, oh wow, we have a Mary Sue. And she talks to herself a lot, which is really irritating. And she uses a lot of things like wayward. So here she is, she lives with this girl named Kate. And Kate, I guess is the editor of a newspaper and she's sick. She's like, Anastasia, go to this interview for me. And Kate looks gammy and gorgeous with strawberry blonde hair, all in place and eyes that are bright green and crap. She named her car, it's named Wanda. And everyone is described by how they're wearing. So we get to know that Anastasia is wearing uh, a skirt, the only one she owns by the way. Uh, sensible brown knee-length boots, whether they're sensible or not, I suppose we are being informed, and a blue sweater. And for her, that's smart. And everyone who works in uh, gray industries or incorporated or whatever is uh, totally beautiful. They're tall blonde models, and they're all dressed really nice. So basically, it's like the devil wears Prada with blondes. And um, here we are, and it says she prefers her own company, reading a classic British novel curled up in a chair in the campus library. And then it's followed up by I roll my eyes at myself, which is fantastic because I also rolled my eyes. Um, everyone rolls their eyes here. There's a lot of head tilting, and I've also found that no one speaks. She, Anastasia does a lot of croaking, murmuring, and sort of like muttering and blushing. And let's see. Oh, Olivia returns with a glass of iced water. I-C-E-D. It's ice. Ice water. Iced water is just fucking ice. Don't deal with that. Oh, and here it is. She doesn't, she is not able to just walk into his office. She totally like falls face first into his office. See, we're bringing up the whole awkward, adorable thing again, which is such a, I hate this trope. It's disgusting and irritating and rude. Who the hell like always walks around going, oh, she's so beautiful. I'm so plain with my big blue eyes and my gorgeous brown hair. Fuck you. I don't want to hear any more of that. Oh, here we are. Christian Grey. We're introduced to Christian Grey. I don't know if he's supposed to be like the other protagonist or like the antagonist or the protagonist. He is uh, attractive. Very attractive. He's tall, dressed in a fine grey suit, white shirt, and black tie with unruly dark copper colored hair and intense bright grey eyes. Uh, let's see, they start having the uh, interview, and there's ellipses everywhere, and she's asking him dumbass question. And everyone is whispering and muttering and murmuring. I mean, there's no actual speaking. And she starts recording his answers, and she keeps saying that he's beautiful. Like, I tried to, like, underline them all, but here again we have, he is uh, really beautiful. No one should be this good looking. Uh, we have a ton of that. He has a penetrating gaze see me. I see you. And let's see, just asking dumb questions. And finally, he starts getting all irritated because he has discovered that Anastasia is not on the newspaper. <gasps> that is the biggest problem with this chapter, and he's like freaking out. He's, oh my gosh, 
it's ridiculous. He's acting, like, all dramatic. They're so dramatic as though she's, like, lied about being pregnant. It's like they're muttering and murmuring. And she starts musing out loud because all of a sudden he randomly, like, out and is like, oh, we have an internship program here. You don't even know her. And she totally lied to you about what she does, by the way. And then he's like, oh, you should work here. And she's like, no, fuck that. Weird. And then he's like, oh, okay, I'll get the door for you. But he doesn't just get the door for her. She, he moves with lithe, athletic grace. Because no one here can do anything. They can't just walk. They have to walk like a duck, if you're Anastasia. They have to move with the elegant array, with the elegant aura of a well-trained stripper or something. Oh, and he blushes again. So she does. And so she gets her coat, and the very end drives me insane. Because he goes, Anastasia, and she goes, Christian, and the door's shut right then. Because it's like a fucking movie. So already in chapter one, we've had the worst interview of my life. I've been told 45 times that Anastasia is awkward yet adorable because everyone seems to love her. And I've been told that Christian Grey is exceptionally good looking. So, so far it's reading exactly like a Twilight fan fiction, except I heard there's a lot more sex. Though I haven't actually got to that yet. At all. But she has asked him if he's gay which I think was probably the only part of this thing that I found somewhat readable. So that's basically it. So far it's boring. I mean, there's really nothing to say. It's totally like reading fan fiction. Oh, I put on a light blue dress that perfectly matches my alabaster skin. It's, ugh, I hate reading books like that where all you do is describe clothing. Like, I get it. If you need to describe it importantly, like, you know, my mother's wedding dress was always beautiful, and you describe that, because, like, oh, okay, that's significant, but if you're always, like, I put on a ripped t-shirt and a pair of pantyhose because I'm feeling adventurous, it's like, I don't care, no one cares. And describing what everyone looks like, I think you should do that once, just if it's really important that someone be described, like, you know, that they have dark hair and dark eyes, because, you know, you're, I don't think that you should totally leave everything up to chance with your reader, but, I mean, going so far out of your way is ridiculous. Like, my only hope is to restrain my wayward hair in a ponytail and hope I look semi-presentable. If you're constantly bringing attention to the fact that your protagonist is supposed to be average looking, but everyone finds her beautiful, I mean, you're kind of screwing up. Why not just have a nice looking protagonist? I, don't, I mean, I don't understand. I have no idea. It's like the constant trope that someone needs to be friggin' awkward to be adorable. I hate that, and it's so agitating. It's like, ugh, why is this published? Oh, and there's a lot of grammar errors. And it's supposed to be a United States book, but there's a lot of British spellings in here. Like, the word gray is constantly spelled G-R-A-Y. But the alliteration of the fact is that Christian Gray's name is spelled G-R-E-Y, which is actually the American spelling of the word gray. But that's his name, so it's always weird. And that's another thing. He's always doing gray shit. Like, he's wearing a gray something, and he's got gray eyes, and his fucking his personality is gray so far as boring. He's one of those, like always calm, cool, and collected types. I want him to, like, I want him to fall face first into an office. That would be inter See, that would be some interesting shit. The cool, collected man took one step towards me and fell! Mine blown. But no, it's the a dark word girl who falls into the office. I've had kind of enough of this book for right now, and, like, I can't even properly formulate sentences because I'm so agitated that not only is this book published, it's a number one New York Times bestseller, and I think I read somewhere that today it, it, it accounts for like, what, 30% of all paper book, paperback book sales right now. And that just terrifies me. This is American literature now. I say American just, I don't know the stats overseas, I'm only referring to um, United States domestic sales. But I mean, that's terrifying, so keep with me, hopefully as the book is interesting, I'll get more interesting. But so far, this book really is just 50 shades of suck ass. Join me next time, I guess if you haven't died of boredom. Bye.